This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. The title of this episode of my podcast is Democratic Centralism as a Pathway to Revolution in Gaza. Let me explain what I mean by that. First, if there is any place in the world right now, in my opinion, that has more dialectical or revolutionary potential, it may be Gaza. Um, it may be because I really don't know. I could, I could be entirely mistaken. But revolutionary or dialectical potential is often driven by imperial domination, by imperialism. And if there is one third world part of the world that is being oppressed by imperialism right now, it is Gaza. Now, we don't know what will happen in the future. We don't. Right now, there are negotiations going on in Cairo between Israel and Hamas, which may produce some type of truce. I can't say whether I expect it or not. I am always suspicious when it comes to Israel. I have mentioned before that my suspicions were confirmed today when Israel kicked Al Jazeera out of Israel and confiscated their equipment. Why would they do that unless they were afraid of something or unless they had plans in mind to do something else and they didn't want uh, Al Jazeera to find out? They effectively referred to Al Jazeera as the voice of Hamas, which Al Jazeera clearly is not. So it makes no sense superficially unless you consider the possibility that perhaps Israel is planning on invading Rafah or perhaps even something worse. And I can't even imagine what that might be. But let's talk about the idea of democratic centralism and Gaza, and what exactly that would mean. To me, democratic centralism can be a revolutionary activity, if done properly. What do I mean by that? Well, there are many different versions of democratic centralism. I personally like the one proposed by Red Rosa, by Rosa Luxemburg. And my own view of it is a slight modification from hers, but pretty much in line with what Red Rosa said. As I have said before, I love Red Rosa. I have always loved, loved Red Rosa. Um, she died. She was assassinated the same year that my father was born, 1919. But that's not the reason why I love her. I just love her. She was brilliant. She had a doctor of law degree, which is two degrees higher than the JD degree that we have in the US, which qualifies a person to take the bar exam. And of course, the doctor of law degree is also available in the US. But first, after getting a JD, one needs to get a master of law degree and then a doctor of law degree. Now, if that sounds contradictory, well, it is because the uh, what is now called the JD used to be called an LLB degree, a Bachelor of Law degree. It was a second bachelor's that was taken after the regular bachelor's degree was completed. So Rosa was very advanced. She was arguably the most educated woman in Germany. She was born into a German-speaking family in Persian, in, in Poland rather, not in Persian, in Poland. And then she migrated uh, to Germany uh, itself, and she became one of the leaders of the communist revolution that she hoped to bring about in that country. Sadly, when the authorities recognized that and realized the danger that she posed to the status quo, 
they killed her and they threw her body over a bridge after she was already dead. Nice, isn't it? Such a fine woman, a wonderful character, a spiritual woman, a woman that everyone who knew her said that they liked. Really inexcusable what happened to her. Notwithstanding that, here is what I mean by democratic centralism as a pathway to revolution in Gaza. Um, by democratic centralism, what I mean is literally democratic centralism. In other words, people who are members of a particular collective or members of a particular society democratically make a decision on what will happen, on who will lead them, what their policies will be, what their ideas will be, how their system of governance will work, and whatever else they want to talk about. All of those are decided democratically. There is no um, autocratic element to democratic centralism. I mean, autocracy would be the opposite of democracy, and it is truly a democratic centralism. Now, once a decision is made, that becomes the policy of that community, officially. And when people are talking about what they believe, then they need to represent that position that was agreed to democratically. And that position or those positions then become the standard by which all decisions are made in the future. In other words, that's the foundation for everything which takes place in that society. Now, what about people who may disagree? Well, that's fine. They can disagree. They can even talk about their disagreements openly and share what their own views are. So democratic centralism is not meant to quelch individual opinion or the expression of other opinions. It is merely to establish a standard by which all activities will be pursued. It does not stop individuals from having their own ideas and from acting on them. That is fine, as long as they make it clear that what they are doing, what they are saying, is not the official policy of this society, of this community, or of this collective. So I think that is a very good approach to democratic centralism, and it is largely based on what Rosa Luxemburg said, my own slant on it, I guess you could say. So why could that be a revolutionary pathway to socialism or communism? I think it is very simple. What Gaza needs now is to break away from the control of the Zionist entity. The Zionist entity will not allow Palestine to be a state. That is clear. And whenever another country proposes that Palestine be a state, Israel objects. And in the United Nations General Assembly, what happens? The U.S. vetoes the proposal. And so for years and years, this game has gone on. With Palestine trying to become a state, Israel objecting, and the U.S. vetoing the proposal. And that is always successful. It is a really good scam. It has worked for decades. And so today, we see this horrible disgusting invasion of the Israeli defense forces into Gaza that were directly a result of a jailbreak 
by the Gazans. A jailbreak. Why? Because Gaza is effectively a prison. It is a prison colony. People can't leave. They're stuck there. No Arab country will accept them. They can't go to Israel either. At least now, I mean, when there was no war, there were some Gazans that could get into Israel to work, but then they had to return to Gaza at night. Gaza was their home, and yet Gaza had this kind of ambiguous status. I mean, it's not exactly a colony. It's not exactly a country. So what is it? It is nothing. It is exactly what Israel wants it to be, a place completely controlled in the interests of maintaining the Zionist status quo. So what if a large number of Gazans got together and simply decided that they would practice democratic centralism? That could be a kind of revolutionary activity. They could make some proposals, set forth some positions, and begin acting on them. Nothing necessarily against Israel, because what history has shown is that whenever the Palestinians have acted directly against Israel, they have been squashed. Now, I would like to see something like that happen. But I don't think that the chances of that, at least right now, are very good. But what the Palestinians can do, and in particular what the Gazans now can do, is at the least to establish their own community, communist community, Marxist communist community, a community which is basically run a according to the views of the people established and promoted democratically with an allowance for individual Gazans or other Palestinians to do what they like, meaning there is no attempt to eliminate free speech, to eliminate free action on the part of any Gazan or other Palestinian. This is merely a set of standards by which the activities of Gaza or the Gazans that have agreed to take part in this activity will conduct themselves. Since that activity would not be directly against the Zionist entity, I suppose that Israel could protest, could object, could drop more bombs, could send in the IDF again to squelch it. But other than that, there is nothing really that would change. In other words, um, the conditions of the Gazans would be unchanged. There would be no hostility expressed by this democratic centralism directly toward Israel. It would simply be an internal activity performed by the Gazans, who again, as I see it, most likely have the greatest amount of revolutionary or dialectical potential of any place in the world right now. Now, would that be true a year from now or even a month from now? Not necessarily. So I think it is important that Gazans seize the moment. And by saying this, I hope I am not coming across as paternalistic or condescending. That is certainly not my intention. Obviously, I am not a Palestinian. I have, ne I have never been to Palestine. I have enormous sympathy for people who live there. I wish that your li living situation was better than it is. I wish that Israel would simply go away and turn the land over to Palestine, from the river to the sea. And I mean that literally, not figuratively, as some people do. I mean the complete elimination of Israel. And by that, 
I do not mean the elimination of Israelis. Israelis can, can go someplace else if they want to or ask for permission from the Palestinians to stay in Palestine. But there would be no more Israel. The land of the Palestinians as indigenous land would remain in the hand in the hands of the Palestinians and only the Palestinians. They would be the ones to make the decisions. So that is what I mean by democratic centralism as a kind of revolutionary activity. Would it work? I don't know. Um, I am not an expert on such things. I'm a sociologist. I'm not a political scientist. Uh, I'm not a prophet. Um, I'm not a seer. I can't tell what the future might bring us. But I do think that it might work. And so my hope as a part of my conscientization, which I am doing in this podcast, is to encourage people in Gaza to attempt it. Now, what you do is obviously up to you. It is not up to me. And I have no right to assert any degree of authority over you because I have none. I respect you. And I would literally want to bow down or lower my head to you if I met you. I feel really bad about your living situation and about the way that my Jewish cousins have been treating you and calling you Nazis, of all things. Of all things, calling you Nazis. Absolutely horrendous. You are victims. You are not perpetrators, and you deserve the best in life. And socialism or communism is, in my view, the best in life. And so I wish it for you. And I think that one way, perhaps, to accomplish that, at least initially, is by this type of democratic centralism put into practice in Gaza. For the time being, this has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.